tell us a little bit about yourself, Simon. How did you get to start? Like, where did you start? And then how, how come you left? Um, well, you know, uh, I'm, I've, I've been basically traveling for 20 years. I've been to I've 70 countries in 71 countries in 20 years. I've lived and worked in nine countries. And about 10 years ago, um, I actually had a job. It was my last proper job. And, um, t and it was quite interesting because I had an office that I had to go to, but I didn't really have to go there. And I, I literally suggested to my boss that, you know, one day I was like, look, I really don't have to come to this office. Do you, do you realize that I can, I can do this job from anywhere? And he was a little bit uncomfortable, uncomfortable about, about it at, at, the stage, at that stage. And he gave me a, uh, a three month trial to see how it was. So I started working for a UK based company in Germany and I worked from a bedroom and I worked for, uh, from a computer and things like that. And then it, it sort of became, you know, 2006 this was, people, you know, weren't very used to you not coming to an office if you were employed. So, um, you know, they would check in on me uh, online on Skype conversations and things like that. But then, you know, um, I actually decided to start my own company because I wanted to have more flexibility and I realized I could do it from anywhere. As long as I had an internet connection and a telephone, I could do it from anywhere. And, you know, when you, you know, my company is a travel marketing company. And, um, you know, at first it was very difficult to sort of convince clients to work with you because you, they were never actually going to physically meet you. But over the last 10 years, the internet has changed, you know, the internet has changed a lot of things and people feel that they don't even need to meet you. And um, so I've worked for clients in, in Europe, Africa, South America, Australia, Asia, all from a computer in, in various different countries around the world. And the, the main thing that people like is accountability. You know, if you, if you say, if you're working on a project or you're working in a different time zone, I found it very interesting how um, clients react. That if, if, you, if they send you an email and it's nine o'clock in the morning their time, and it's one o'clock in the morning your time, and you answer that email, they're very happy about that, you know. <laughs> you know, so it, it was very That's interesting. True. It was very interesting a few years ago when I was based in in Cape Town in South Africa, and I was having I was working for a Mexican client in Mexico City, and you know I would I would work within their hours, so I would work. Um, it was very interesting how they would say, "Okay, can we have a." Can we have a Skype meeting at two o'clock Mexican Mexico City time, which was which was I think it was about 11, 11 p.m. Cape Town time? But of course, yeah. So that was very interesting for for them. I always work within clients' working hours, not my own. That's a great tip, Simon. And mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about what you do with your travel marketing business. So you know, we we started. 10 years ago representing brands at travel shows and things and things like that and you know I've worked in travel for 20 years so I have a lot of contacts in, in, in the travel business and we then we then started working more as a social media company so we were literally you know at the start of social media in 2007 we were setting up Facebook pages for people setting up Twitter accounts for people managing their social media setting up their LinkedIn accounts and people, you know, you know, evangelists for social media, if you like. And people were saying, you know, it was back. I remember getting laughed at. <laughs> I was physically laughed at at a, at a travel conference because um, I was, I was uh, literally standing on a travel stand of a travel brand and physically laughed at by somebody when they said, this gentleman would like us to pay him to Facebook for us. That was the way it was. Uh, just, that was the way it was described in, in two thousand, in two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. So we, we were we were managing people's Facebook uh, platforms, Twitter accounts, etc. Then we realised that there was a severe lack of content because when social media became more advanced and people realized they needed content, we actually realized that the clients didn't have the content that they wanted to produce. So we, we sort of pivoted, if you like, into a content marketing company where we worked with travel, brand, with, with travel bloggers and photographers and videographers uh, creating content for travel brands. We've created our own brands. Uh, we've, uh, we've created social media campaigns 
working with international bloggers. Um, and we were quite early, quite early in that, uh, to be honest, because by mistake, we, we, we worked with a client in 2010 who wanted us to create something new. And that was an international brand called Hostling International, you know, the global network of, of youth hostels around the world. Mm -hmm. And we got the contract, we got the contract to relaunch their brand in South Africa. And we had a very cool CEO at Hostling International in the at the head office in the UK who said they wanted us to do something different. So we came up with using bloggers in 2010. People, the blogger industry didn't exist. We didn't really know what we were doing, but nobody really knew what we were doing, what they were doing. And we literally employed, we posted adverts on the uh, you know, the South African version of Craigslist and offered people free trips around South Africa to go and create content for us. And it was people like Ricky, you know, it was, it was people content, content is, going, is, is this for real? Can we get a free trip around South Africa? And we were like, yeah, we just want you to travel around South Africa and document it, take daily pictures, post them on Facebook, you know, write a blog post as if it's a daily diary. And we didn't know this was this was the blogger industry. We, you know, it didn't exist in 2010. And in 2010, we did six international, six national blogger trips around South Africa with bloggers from all around the world. We did a video campaign in 2010 where we used an Australian blogger to travel around South Africa creating videos and that that got us noticed by South African tourism so um, there's a word the, the, the very famous South African tourism campaign they did which is a groundbreaking campaign called meet South Africa the hashtag meet South Africa they they used sort of teams of international bloggers to travel around the country and create content and because we were already doing that we were employed as consultants to do that and um, from that, we've we've worked with national tours and boards in Colombia, Medellin in Colombia. We worked with them. We worked with uh, the Greek national tours and board. We've worked with various different national tours and boards, creating campaigns like that. So we moved on from the, from sort of those blogger campaigns, and in 2014, we um, I actually went to Brazil for three months because. Um, you know, digital nomading, if you like. Everything that we ran operationally in South Africa was from this computer that I'm sitting in front of now, and it could be done from, from anywhere in the world. And I'm a, I'm a big football fan. I've been to three World Cups. We ran an operation in, in South Africa during 2010, and we wanted to go to Brazil and replicate that in Brazil and, and, and you know, run operations always, and tours around Brazil of um, what other people are doing because people always well, we, say, you know, just, oh, well, because that wouldn't work for me. In, in the world and world. you've got to say, well, it might not work for you, but it might work for other people. You know, it's the, uh, so what I realized from digital nomading is that I absolutely hate working from home. Um, I hate sitting in, a, in, a, in an apartment working. It, you know, if you're traveling around the world and you're working, you want to be out, you want to be seeing the city, you want to be experiencing the city, you want to be see, seeing different people and meeting different people around the world, connecting globally. So this year we started a brand called Co-Working Days because we realized in the, off, in the online world, the online world is growing a lot more people are working online on various different projects. It can be accountants, it can be web designers, it can be graphic designers. It really can be anything that people can do remotely and work online. Um, we also realize that there are, there are a lot of meetups and events for digital nomads and for startups and for people because people are craving offline events because their lives are existing behind computers and on devices nowadays. So we, we took both of those examples and put them together and, and realized that the weak link was that all these meetups and events are in the evenings. They are for people to meet up after work, have a few drinks and network. So our co-working days concept is about meeting up and working socially and being productive. So now we have co-working days, events, where people can meet in cafes, they can meet in, um, in co-working spaces. They can even have brainstorming walks, all about the community of people who, who want to work together socially. 
So we started that in Athens, Greece, and it's been quite, quite a success because we have the meetups once a month in different locations around the, in Athens. And we find it, I, I like social experiments as well, so we find it really interesting that people come to these events and what interesting people come to the events because we have people who want to come and they want to have a theme. They want to sit in a cafe and have a theme and discuss SEO, discuss, uh, discuss new marketing ideas and we also have people who are just happy to come to our events and be out of their pajamas out of their out of their apartments and working together working together in a group of people so we we've had co-working events co-working days events now in athens london cape town berlin we've also growing communities in prague um and you know, you're the first people to know this, but off off the back of our co-working days event in in London that we had last this week, we were contacted yesterday by a community in Mauritius, and they are actually wanting to start a co-working days event in Mauritius and also um, in Bucharest in Romania. To have, have tapped into something that that people want, they they want to work socially. You know, they they want to be able to. They don't want to sit in a library sort of atmosphere where everybody's plugged in and they're not able to talk which a lot of coast working spaces are they want to sit in a, a cool cafe and meet people and you know be productive which is our slogan that is awesome i'm really excited to hear that because uh, half the time where i go is based on is there a co-working space and do they have good internet and yes. uh, i actually was in southern turkey for three weeks with very, very poor internet because I was right out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, mm. so then I started doing a search and Scofi Macedonia had a co-working space. So I sent them a message, how fast is your internet? 100 megs up, 100 megs down, she says. I said, great, I'm going to be there in a week. <laughs> and spent a week with them and just had a great time. So. Uh, yeah, well, this this is this is the thing as well. You know, you know, you can when you know, it's all about building a community because you know I, I can go to a co-working space, but I want to go to a co-working space and meet people. So you know, being productive might be. I, I work a lot. Being a digital nomad, I work. I work on productivity and finding the balance between work and life. So every morning before work, I will take a three kilometer, six kilometer walk wherever I am, and that is my walk to work. Then I will go to a cafe and I will work, and I work on being productive. And maybe being productive on a computer isn't what you need that day. Maybe being productive is meeting somebody new. And if you ask anybody, I'm sorry, but if you ask anybody how fast is their Wi-Fi, they're going to say it's fast. <laughs> you yes, know, yes, um, they're going to say, it's, it, oh, the Wi-Fi is amazing. Don't worry. You can come here and work. You're fat. But you want to actually reach out to communities and ask, do they know where the fast Wi-Fi is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do they have experience of working in that, in that cafe, in that co-working space? What is the atmosphere like? Can I go and meet somebody? And when you've got a community that you can tap into, you know, you can arrive in Athens now you can arrive in, Ca in in Cape Town now you can arrive in London and you can contact the co-working days community and you can say hey guys is there anybody around you know I need some advice on SEO I've got a little bit of a programming problem is there anybody who just wants to meet up and have a chat and you know maybe we can share some ideas maybe I can help you with something that's all that's what I like about the concept are, are there any good websites where you can actually find co-working spaces? Because that's, I think, one of the challenges is that uh, when you arrive in a new city or country or continent, you have no idea, you know, like, for example, with me, I've been traveling around Brazil, now I'm in French Guiana, Suriname, and Guyana. These are the, the, the biggest <laughs> digital nomad hubs in the world. So I, I've just been working in my hotels or um, in coffee shops, etc. So I don't even know if there are co-working spaces. So I don't know if... Do you know if there's any websites like that? There's a, there's, a, there's a website. There's many websites. There's a, there, there, there are many websites that are, there's a, that, that, are, that are growing. One that I found recently is called Nomad List. And um, that, is, that is a paid subscription where they charge you $30 a month, etc. Uh, which I'm just trying for the first couple of days now. There's another one called workfrom.co. Um, I think it's workfrom.co. They're a Portland-based 
uh, websites, I think, but they they saw, they will tell you all the cafes around the world and the Wi-Fi speeds and things like that. And also, there's a growing movement as well to co-working retreats and co-working uh, co-working retreats where you can stay for a week or something like that. And there's a theme, and also co-living houses as well. This is a, a, a movement that is um, that is that is happening, and that is a a a sort of reaction to the fact that you know backpacker hostels or cheap accommodation places around the world will never guarantee you good Wi-Fi because their business model is not to give you good Wi-Fi. Their business model is to get you to sleep in their beds, consume their food, consume their alcohol, and book tours. So um, now there are many co-living houses springing up around the world, and there's a really good brand in in, in the United States that are expanding quite quite uh, quickly called Outsight. And they've got branch. They've got houses in Santa Cruz, California, Lake Tahoe, California, Venice Beach, LA, San Diego, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, and I recently saw that they're opening up in Hawaii and New York. But there are many of these co co living houses, and that's something that we are we are doing with our co working days. Um, back on to what we did in London this week, which was a very interesting project. We set up co working days this this year. And we are very well. Well, we lost our guest. This is one of the uh, things that happens when you're uh, a busy co-working expert like Simon is. He, uh, I'd like to say he got called away, but he, he got dropped. So hopefully he will be back in a minute. And, and while we're waiting, we could talk about our co-working experience. So tell us about all these co-working hotspots you've uh, visited and how have you found them when you're uh, traveling around Eastern Europe, for example. Scott? There, there is, there, like he mentioned, Nomad List. And I don't recall if that's the same one, as the, but there is one, and it has a bunch of information on co-working places. Uh, w first of all, whether the cities are good for co-working in general. And so it's not just the speed of the internet, but you know, is it in, is it expensive, inexpensive? Is it a fun place? Is it a safe place? All of those things. And um, what I find is really helpful, and he kind of alluded to it, was uh, different groups. So I look for uh, you know uh, expat groups in Vietnam or uh, you yeah. know gringos in Medellin, and, and then all of a sudden you're at place, and this is where everyone kind of congregates, and then it's like, okay, well, what is a good co-working spot? And um, you, you need to really know it before you go because you could have a great co-working spot, but you're like, ten, you know, an hour drive across town from it, you know. So I was really lucky in Skofi in, in Macedonia because I knew where the place was and then I found an Airbnb that was less than five minute walk. I couldn't believe it. It didn't look that close on the map, but when I got there, Five minutes and I was I was at the co-working spot it was really cool the other thing that I liked about the co-working place in Skofi was the, uh, uh, the when I told the people who I was they arranged for an event so there was you know five or ten people came to this event I got to talk about podcasting and and now of course I knew these people they knew me they told me a little bit more about the city I got a chance to become part of a community that I hadn't had an opportunity to do before. So I really recommend when you're looking at the co-working spots and you finally find one that you like, uh, the, you know, tell them, well, you know what, I happen to be an expert on this. And, and they may say, wow, like, well, you know, let's, we're, cause they're always looking for something to kind of drum up business and excitement, right? So if you can come and you can talk to a group of them on whatever your topic is and keep them enthralled and interested, uh, you know, you're you're never a prophet in your own land but when you're traveling you are like absolutely amazing this guy from canada has come to macedonia he's only the fourth person in the history of the world to ever yeah. come from canada and so <laughs> they make you feel special and and you have a you know and you have a good time too because you meet you meet local people that you wouldn't otherwise meet and i think that's a big key to you know traveling i mean you can what's the difference between traveling to Athens or Rio de Janeiro or New York or to a hotel in New York City. Usually not much. So, you know, the TV might be a little different, 
mm-hmm. you know, so what's really different is when you go out to the community and you get to meet the people and you talk to them and you see how they live. And I have to tell you that uh, I'm a bit ashamed of how I am as a host compared to how <laughs> I've been treated as a guest. And so that's something that's definitely going to change when I settle down again. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, so many people have helped us on this journey, like even here in French Guyana. Uh, French Guyana um, doesn't have the best uh, tourism infrastructure in the world. <laughs> it doesn't have a tourism infrastructure at all. And, and there's not many buses between cities. Uh, half the time, there's no schedules. You Like uh, even uh, as you probably, if you listen to the last episode, I do like, uh, jump out of that last episode just because I had to cast this minibus which just arrived at my hotel to pick me up because there's no public buses between towns so I've been struggling here and uh, but the thing is like so many people are helpful like uh, um, for example in uh, the capital of French Guyana I was staying in Cyan um, and uh, we weren't sure how to get to the next town so what happened is at the hotel we were staying in uh, I ended up running into a couple from Richmond, BC, Canada, of all places, and I'm actually from like Burnaby, so they only like a 50 minute uh, uh, drive away from my hometown. Uh, and they would drive; they had rented a car and they were driving to the next town. And we met, and uh, within five minutes, I jumped in the car with my bags and my kids, and we were off to the next town. <laughs> so uh, I had no idea how I was going to get to the next town, and within a few minutes, I had a ride. So uh, nice. you'll be amazed by the amount of people who will help you on your journey. That's right. And welcome um, back, Simon. We, we have Simon back. And Simon is oh, actually gosh. one of the people who's helped me on my journey. Uh, when I was actually in Rio de Janeiro, when I was in Cape Town, I was looking to connect with locals. And uh, 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 Simon set up an amazing network called the African Blogger Network. And he was able to connect me with a few different bloggers in South Africa. When I went to Rio, I was looking to do some travel blogging. And he connected me with the hostel owner in Rio. So I was able to uh, stay there uh, for free in return for a blog review. So people like Simon, who are amazing networkers, are really good to connect with uh, because they'll be able to help you without even having met. He's just able to help and connect me digitally. It's also, um, so it's also connecting with Simon. It's it's also it's also really good when you're traveling for, uh, uh, to do some crowdsourcing. I always enjoy, enjoy a little bit of crowdsourcing. So when I whenever I go to a destination, I will always say, "Hey guys!" Or whenever I'm going to a destination, I'll always use my social media network to say, "Hey guys, I'm going here. Anybody got any recommendations?" And it's amazing how how connected you can become and how people will connect you to their friends and give you advice and all that sort of stuff. And you know. That's why you travel. You travel to sort of experience other places, but you travel to meet other people as well. So it's fantastic. Yeah, the, the great great tip there. I actually did that when I was in Brazil. Uh, when we first got to Brazil, I just said, um, hey, guys, on social media, I just said, we're, we're coming to Brazil, and we'd love to meet people along the way. If you know anyone, tag them in the comments below. And within about 10, 15 minutes, I had about uh, 20 different names of people in Rio, in Sao Paulo, in uh, Curitiba, up in uh, Salvador, and um, at the end, uh, we've actually finished Brazil now, and I think I met about 10 or 12 people that I I didn't even know before, but I met them through the power of social media, and yeah. obviously it's great to connect with locals, and uh, these people who I'd never met, they were just two degrees of separation away, was super helpful, so I highly recommend that if you're going to a city, you put in your social media and you'll get connected. Yeah. Simon, I have a question for you, because you mm-hmm. kind of talked about 10 years ago, you know, these bloggers running around South Africa, and I'm curious for all the people that want to be digital nomads and, and the people that have taken our course on traveling the world that Ricky and I are, have, well, it's uh, in the process of being uh, published right now. Uh, is there still opportunities for bloggers or vloggers to go around and, and uh, get tours at, in exchange for uh, posting and publishing content? There's the, the, there's there, there, there are there are many opportunities, but there's there's there, there are there are a lot of travel bloggers, and you know the the travel industry are inundated with travel bloggers trying to get free things and trying to get paid to actually do it as well because there are professional bloggers out there who try to get who, who want to get paid and do get paid because they offer great value, but you know there are there are op- uh, there are opportunities for people to do exchanges for blog posts and things like that but it's getting more niche i would say you know if if you just sort of approach if you approach a lodge or if you approach a hotel or a destination say hey i'm a travel blogger i've got x amount of followers i've I've got x amount of people and i can write a blog post for you 
you know, a lot of people are getting 10, 20, 30, maybe hundreds of those emails a week. Um, so, you know, you've, you've really got to stand out. So, you know, like Ricky, for example, his niche of the uh, daddy traveling the world, that, that's an interesting niche. So if people do want to become bloggers and they do want to use that, that way of traveling, really sort of identify a niche you want to target. And then that will make you stand out from the, from the other, other people. So what you're saying is, is that my niche should be the early 20-something group. Exactly, definitely. Or, or, or gray beard, Santa Claus looking men. That would be a good one as well. <laughs> men who look like Santa Claus. That could be a good niche. <laughs> hey, hey, you've traveled to like 70 countries. We kind of brushed over that part. But I think out of all the interview guests, I think you're, you're at the top right now. Uh, I'm sure we're going to interview people who have been to every country in the world. I'm a little bit behind you. I'm about 63, but I'm catching up. Who knows yeah, but, but, by then but, the year but, I did 70 as but, well. But, 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 but 70 in 20 years means I went to a lot more than just the airport. That's a, that's a difference. You know, I see, people post, I, I see people post online saying, hey, I'm traveling for, for three years and I've been to 70 countries. I'm like, that doesn't count to me. It really doesn't count. I like, to, I like to say, you know, you've been to a country if you've been there for like at least a month. You know? <laughs> and that's a good rule of thumb. I mean, that's what we're doing currently. Like, we're visiting yeah. about a, a month per country. Obviously, smaller countries like French Guyana, Suriname, it's about a week. But bigger countries yeah. like Brazil, it's about six weeks. And South mm -hmm. Africa, we are there for two months. So uh, tell us about some of the, your highlights because uh, we talk about digital nomadism. We covered, um, you know, income generation. But we didn't cover the whole travel side of your journey. So mm -hmm. in, in 20 years, what are some of your highlights of the 70 countries so far? Um, well, well one, of, one of my definite highlights was it, it was 17 years ago now, but I was standing on the beach in Copacabana for the millennium. That was amazing. <laughs> you know, the, the New, New Year's Eve in Rio always gets about two to three million people on the beach, but I've still got the Newsweek article uh, magazine in my house somewhere where they said there was five and a half million people on Copacabana Beach to celebrate the millennium. That was really good. Um, I've been to three World Cups, like I said before. I've been to, to the, the World Cup in Germany in 2006. I was at the World Cup in South Africa in 2010. I've been to uh, the World Cup in Brazil in 2014. Um, my favorite country in the world, believe it or not, is still South Africa. Out of all the countries in the world I've been to, South Africa is still my favorite. Cape Town is my favorite city in the world. Um, I, second, I second South Africa with Argentina. Is very similar to South Africa, which you know is so far away from anywhere else being one of the similarities. I really do like Argentina as well. Uh, you know, uh, I've I've spent a lot of time in Asia, but not for many years. So I've been to China. Um, China is an amazing place to visit, but I, I always put China on the list of of one of the the countries in the world that you get to, you get to visit and it, it feels like a different planet china is, is really a different planet to anywhere else I've, I've, I've been so yeah i've traveled extensively in africa south america not much not much to the states to be honest i actually only went to the united states for the first time in 2014. <laughs> i just want a second uh, to Canada think about very... south africa, south africa is incredible I, uh, out of out of my 60 countries i think south africa ranks there in the top uh three as well i love south africa and cape town like ranks in the top three for me i think i still like sydney australia better than cape town in terms of just the amazing beauty of sydney australia and i i think cape town is my second and then rio de janeiro is my third in terms of just beautiful cities uh, yeah well a, a few a few years ago i my, the theme of a tr my trip a few years ago i was country shopping I was I left Cape Town and I went country shopping and I had this dream of going to live in, in South America. And it was when the Brazilian real was very high. So the quality the, 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 the cost of living in Brazil was very, very expensive and I didn't find the quality that high. And um, and when I traveled to Argentina, it was during the crash in Argentina. So Argentina was very, very cheap. They had the unofficial exchange rate where you could change pesos on the street for like double the amount of the official exchange rate. But when I put everything into comparison, and, and in, that, in that 12 months I was in, I was in Chile, I was in Argentina, I was in Colombia, I was in Brazil, I was in the United States, I was back in Europe as well. And in, the, in, the, in that 12 months, I still put South Africa as the, as the best place based on the quality of life, the value for money where it comes to, to food and accommodation and things like that.
the quality of food and accommodation and, you know, obviously weather and diversity. I, put, I definitely put South Africa up there as still one of the best. Awesome. Well, thank you, Simon, for joining us. It's been a, a treasure trove me. of information, and I, mm. I hope and I want to invite you to come on again yeah. in a few months. We'll catch up with you. We'll see more sure. about what's happening at coworkingdays.com and yeah, your well, conferences. That, yeah, well, that was what I was just about to mention before we got cut off just before. The thing with what we're doing with Coworking Day is a really new, unique concept where we're having co-working day events sponsored by uh, Cape Town in different cities around the world, where 10 digital nomads at each event can win the opportunity to go to Cape Town on an all expenses pay trip and just live the digital nomad life. So that's really interesting. And you can find out more information about that on coworkingdays.com. Great. Well, thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh